This is New Orleans today, and this is what New Orleans is predicted to look like in 30 years. See the difference? Erosion is the process where water movement gradually carries away rocks, sand, mud, as well as terrestrial soil. This can be worsened by sea level rise, tsunamis, waves, and human activities. The severity of coastal erosion, or erosion occurring near seas, is only worsening with climate change. A new report found that damages caused by just soil erosion exceeded $16 billion each year. Erosion will damage businesses, residences, and infrastructure. In just New Orleans, an area experiencing terrible coastal erosion, over 9,000 jobs and $568 million in wages are expected to be lost in the next 50 years. Now, this may seem far out, but the damages caused by erosion are happening now. Each year, the U.S. loses billions of dollars in property and large areas of habitat to erosion. Right now, more than 80,000 acres of coastal wetlands are lost annually. This is equivalent to seven football fields disappearing every hour of every day. Scour, or when fast-moving water, usually in rivers, erodes the sediment that surrounds the base of supports bridges, is one of the three main causes of bridge failure. It has been estimated that 60% of all bridge failures are caused by scour or other water-related causes. And erosion can damage the river ecosystems themselves. During heavy rain, stream levels rise and the rate of erosion in a river increases. As more soil is stripped from the stream bank, phosphorus can leach into the river, leading to algal blooms. This excess amount of algae can kill other plant life in the waters and eventually suffocate the fish swimming in the river. One study in Vermont found that during one of the heaviest rainstorms, more sediment and phosphorus leached into the stream than the entire previous year. The effects of eutrophication, or heavy algal growth caused by phosphorus in the water, will be felt in that river for years to come. Clearly, the consequences of erosion on all levels are dramatic, but also incredibly complex. We're seeing changes in aquatic life, water temperature, land usage, damage to construction, and so much more. Just as the impacts of erosion are widespread, the factors, or things that influence erosion, are equally complex. People have been studying erosion for centuries, but much of our work is based on looking at sand and other non-cohesive sediments like gravel. When predicting erosion on cohesive sediments, like mud and soil, which have fine particulates that tend to stick together and form clumps, our understanding remains incomplete and tools are limited. This cohesiveness greatly changes how particles interact with the flow of water, which impacts erosion. Looking at erosion on a closer level, we can also look at how the bacteria in soil impact erosion. Bacteria can form biofilms, which are when bacteria clump together and form an organic slime or film that sticks them to surfaces. These films can change the size or shape of particles. This variety of factors makes studying erosion at different scales incredibly important. We must look at how microscopic bacteria impact erosion, how larger structures impact erosion, and how it changes globally. At St. Anthony Falls Laboratory, this is what we're doing. We are currently combining multi-scale experiments and numerical simulations to understand how physical factors change cohesive sediment transport. On a small scale, we have confocal microscopes, which have the power to look directly at living cells. Looking larger, we have an entire flume lab. These flumes are deep, narrow channels which simulate streams running through them. Our largest flume can accommodate 300 cubic feet per second of flow and has its own data carriage system. This data carriage system can track anything in the flume from flow velocity to even the elevation of the riverbed. It can then reconstruct the flume based on its data down to a millimeter scale of precision. On a large scale, we have access to the Outdoor Stream Lab, where we take water from the Mississippi River and run it through our artificial stream complete with plant life and wildlife. This system has many instruments in it to monitor a variety of aspects in the stream. Professor Judy Young in the Department of Civil, Environmental, and Geoengineering, in collaboration with Professor Ian Borg at Princeton University, is leading our team at St. Anthony Falls Laboratory in better understanding erosion, and the impacts of her team's work will be incredibly useful for years to come. When we look at erosion, we see something that has been studied for so long that we assume that we know everything about it, but the systems that surround it are so complex that there is still much we do not know. Judy's group is in a unique position to lead this new research direction on erosion because they are one of the few groups in the world that have expertise in both microfluidics and flume experiments, as well as knowledge in microbiology and also fluid mechanics. With erosion impacting land management, construction, ecology, and so much more, 
it is important that we have this interdisciplinary team looking at erosion. The results of these studies coming out of SAFL will improve our ability to predict coastal and riverine erosion, which will guide future coastal and river restoration projects, as well as allow us to better predict and control the spread of biofilms in these areas. Erosion acts on multiple scales. It's time that us as scientists did as well.